Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. How was your weekend? Mine was pretty good. Mine was pretty good. The food was good. That's how I, I, I decide if I've had a good weekend. Was the food good? And I did, in fact, eat a lot of pancakes. So that makes for a good start. So what we have on tap today, haha, good stuff. Women shaming men, shaming them outright. Apparently, this one woman doesn't like Applebee's. You're going to see some video you're not going to believe, or maybe you will believe it. Maybe you've lived it even. So people in the chat, if you have lived experiences like this, we're going to want you to weigh in. We have Top G over here, Tyler, who's going to be managing the chat. So Got to do the power. <laughs> there you go. We're going to be talking about attacks on motherhood um, that come from both men and women. Interesting. Mostly from women, though, to be perfectly frank. We have women afraid of men. Why is that happening? Why are women choosing men that then they're afraid of Women also having a complete misunderstanding of guns. That's fascinating. We'll hear them talk about they, they acting like people are walking around with machine guns. Who knew? Maybe they watch too much CNN. Who knows? We've got women with zero self-awareness. Zero. It'd be fascinating to watch. And we have a body count discussion and an exchange on the Whatever podcast. You guys know this podcast, Whatever. I'm, to- I'm so into it. I have to tell you, it, it's, it's like watching really bad reality television, which, by the way, I'll also sign up for. It is fascinating. It's this guy, you'll see, and he sits at a table, just him, with a whole bunch of girls, and you're just praying for him. You're praying for him the whole time. You're like, he's got to get some type of metal to endure the crazy, because there's a lot of crazy that goes on. But we're going to talk about it all, and we're going to begin right off the, off the bat with a TikTok that went viral. It's a two-parter, which you know I love. Let's check out the first part. We'll talk about it, and then we'll show you what happened in part two. Oh, man. Yeah, I wanted to ask you. Yeah. How much money do you make? Like, I I don't don't want to seem like a, you know, interested in, like, money and stuff, but I just want to come out from the get-go to tell you, like, I'm not a gold digger or anything, but I just don't go out with both boys. I think so, I, I made good enough. To, and know. I know you just took me to Applebee's, like, I get it. Maybe you don't want to take me to the most fanciest place, like, on the first date, but never again are you going to take oh, me well, next time, next time we can go somewhere else. But. Like, Applebee's is not acceptable. Uh, I am yeah. not. I'm high well, We're just getting to know each other. You're not even my girl. Well, yeah, but about? this is dating to marry, right? <laughs> Well, who knows? And if I date, it's not to waste my time, so I'm not going to be going out and going to, you know, cheap restaurants. Honey, what do you bring to the table to have an attitude like that? Can you imagine someone so entitled on, this is date one, date one, and she's mad that he took her to Applebee's. Honestly, what's wrong with Applebee's? What is wrong with Applebee's? You're sitting, you're having a nice drink. You know what I would have done if I was that guy? I would have taken a 20 out because you still, ultimately at the end of the day, you got to be a gentleman for yourself, right? Some people in the comments were like, I would have just left her there, left her to pay the bill. I get it. Believe me, I get it. But you got to live with yourself. I would have taken a 20 right out of my pocket. I would have put it down on the table and I would have left. Why are you even spending time with somebody who has the audacity on date one to be like, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be coming to Applebee's ever again. I would have said, oh, honey, you're not, because this is gonna be the last date. This is the first and the last, because you're being disrespectful. That's what I would have said. These guys are way too nice, way too nice. And I know, I know, I always say be a gentleman, but you're not there to be a doormat. You can very politely say, hey, doll, I'm still paying. I'm here to get to know you. I thought, you know, this would be a nice place for us to just hang out. This is date one. You're not my girlfriend. You're not my wife. We're feeling it out. So just chill. And if you don't want to hang, you're more than free to leave. I cannot believe these women. The audacity of these women. Where does she want to go? The Ritz Carlton, honey? You wanted him to take you to the Ritz Carlton? How does he know that you deserve the Ritz Carlton? He hasn't even had a conversation with you. Tyler, does this? I mean, I just cannot believe this. I like his caption. I should have just stayed with my baby mama. Yeah, bro, you should (laughs) have. Yes. 
The dating pool sucks. Yes, actually. Applebee's is unacceptable. Like, don't get me wrong. Applebee's is trash. But still, it's like, who do you... You don't get to decide what is and isn't acceptable. Again, like you said, he's I, he's paying. He's paying for her... Not only that, I understand. Listen, maybe, maybe you meet somebody and, you know, things are going well. You, you know, go have a coffee. You do whatever. And then a few dates in, he's taking you for dinner at Applebee's and you're like, hmm... This is just first meet and greet. And I get it. I'm not into the Applebee's food. But, like, you're just having a drink. Just chill for a second. I know, like, people who go, on, go to a dive bar, and that's their first date. Maybe he did it as a test, honey. Did you ever think that maybe he brought you to Applebee's to see if you were a stuck-up, entitled brat? Because only a stuck-up, entitled brat would say something about that. You might pause for a second, look around, be like, well, Applebee's isn't my speed, so... Maybe we're not compatible. Let me just shut up and see where it goes. But that's a quick way to weed out a spoiled brat and to vocalize it like that. Oh, I'm not going to be coming to Applebee's again. No, you won't because I'm not going to pay your tab again. Chill. Wow. Okay, then there's a part two. (laughs) He provides a follow-up to what happened, which is quite beautiful because it's a text message exchange. She finds out that he posted the video. Let's see how that goes, Tyler. You got to mute that one. Oh, here it is. We had to mute it because there's music in the background. Can you guys read what it says there? Tyler, can you help us out? I actually didn't print that one. It says, hey, just wanted to let you know I already seen the video you posted to me on your TikTok. I think it's messed up you would post that video without my consent. Uh, posted it by accident. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't do it by accident. She goes, WTF, how is that an accident? That's true. He goes, you don't like how you sound? She says, well, I don't care really. I just think it wasn't cool for you to post a one minute video of me where people are judging my character without knowing the full story, hearing the rest of what I said. You aren't a gentleman, I see. Well, he paid for your dinner, so mm-hmm. probably and more. Uh, I doubt I'll ever give you a second date. It's not my fault. All those broke guys are mad in the comments and those girls are happy with a $5 burger. He said, shake my head. They want a part two. What do you think? Another date? <laughs> He's like, you want to do it again? He's just, you know, driving her mad. She had the audacity. First of all, too bad he made. He posted what actually happened. You got to know, listen, in this day and age, first of all, privacy is dead. We all know that. Somebody could be recording you at any second, any time. So you always got to be acting like you're on the behavior that you are okay with presenting to the world. So she knows this TikTok exists. She knows what's going on here. You can't tell me that she didn't see that either, that something was, she probably had some inkling that something was going on there. But she goes after all other guys too. So not only is she saying like, oh, this isn't good enough for me, but she's saying that Applebee's isn't good enough for anyone. So what about the guy out there that's working hard? He's trying to make ends meet. He does want to get out there and date. He wants to meet someone, but that's what he can afford today. Maybe he's a young guy who's just his get out, getting his first apartment going. I mean, the audacity to label all guys as doing something wrong if they're taking you out to a place that they can afford in that moment. And I'm not saying you shouldn't treat a lady. I'm not saying any of that. But what audacity. This is, please, this is date one. Do you understand that? This is one, this is just two people hanging out. The unbelievable audacity gall to be so ungrateful and then to be mad that he posted which I love that he posted the video and then he was like oh you were pissed I posted the video I'm just gonna post this text exchange (laughs) I'm gonna back it up what do you think what do you think she would have said if he cooked for her you think she would have had the same reaction if he was like hey come over I want to make you dinner she'd be like yeah what are you fucking broke you can't afford to take me out I do think that girl wanted to be taken to like five star you know I, I would have loved to tell me you're not dying to see the girl I am. I really am. Everybody in the comment was looking at her nails and say her nails kind of gave her away. I wanted to see, though, what like how well dressed she was, how like what? Because that would tell you what her expectations were of that day. She's all decked out (laughs) and she's in Applebee's. She's pissed. Right. So I'm curious. I'm curious. And and, and, you know, one of the, the themes of this show today is for the guys to feel comfortable asking women like this. What do you bring to the table? You feel entitled to have a five-star dinner on date one. You're mad that we went to Applebee's to have a drink. Okay, why? so you're holier than thou, right? Why? Why? 
So I'd be curious to see how she put herself together because it'll tell you what she expected that day. That woman would absolutely be upset. Well, first of all, she, I, I don't know. I don't know. Is it weird in this day and age? It's a good question. Is it weird for a guy to say, I'm going to cook you dinner because everyone's afraid of men now and you would think there was something wrong with like, oh, I can't go into his apartment. Is that weird now in 2022? Probably. Well, like, so yesterday morning, Tori was like, hey, I want, I want biscuits and gravy from this little breakfast place we go to. And I was like, yeah, I don't really want to go pay for that. So I went and spent twice as much to buy the ingredients to make <laughs> to it. To make it. Because I got this new grill and I got a griddle and it was like, I was like, this is awesome. I get to cook, right? <laughs> but I was thinking like, you're probably like, if a guy said that today, she'd be like, oh, you're just trying to sleep with me? Trying to get me home. And right. So, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So I, I, that's, the, that's the challenge. Well, that's why you go out. My advice is you go out with guys like this. You don't get picky from, you can't be picky from second one. He doesn't even know you. Come on. Also, and I guarantee you that girl in another video, you're going to hear her saying, I don't care about money. Just treat me well. Just be nice. I don't care about money at all. Mm -hmm. We've got the receipts, honey. You care about money and then some. So I thought that would be an interesting uh, way to open up the show. Uh, as I said, I'm I'm really into this whatever podcast. I love it. I love when someone's outnumbered. And this guy, the host of the show, he's always on a panel with a series of largely, not all, insufferable women. I mean, some of them, every now and then you'll have one that you'll be like, oh, that's a good addition to the table or someone who really doesn't fit in. But the vast majority of women there, you're like, are if you showed up for a blind date and it was them, you cry for the first 15 minutes and then you try to figure out a way out. That's bottom line. So there's an interesting conversation that happens here about, that's pretty deep actually, that's about motherhood and custody, custody battles. And he initiates it. There's a woman at the table who seems to be, I don't know if she had a lot of alcohol or smoked a joint. Something's going on there. I don't know what it is. You tell me when you listen. She has a very definite, definite opinion about this. She has a child. And the, the interaction left me stunned so let's play it and I may stop it um I may stop it here and there to, put, to to provide commentary but let's start let's start push that there should be an assumption of uh equal custody okay. between both parents okay but currently the way the court system is set up oh, okay. typically it defers okay. mostly to women getting that's custody. actually not true it's very true I think it's I don't true think so. it's very true <laughs> Money talks. Source, I think yeah. it's very true. Money, money so, talks, though. So, and so typically <laughs> defers to women having prim primary custody. I don't know the exact terminology. Well, yeah, they birth the motherfuckers. But I mean, in Florida, in Florida recently, in Florida <laughs> recently, there was a uh, they were trying to pass a bill where it would be fifty, like fifty fifty, equal okay. custody. Yeah. And feminist organizations fought against that. Hmm. So, it it would technically come to the at the detriment of women for there to be 50 50 wait uh, why because equality. you get like an alimony check or a child support check or something what yes the, women, no you it, don't get child support thing, if it's 50 -50. I, I just meant the, the thinking just there is just that because you I'm, lose out on a check what's, I mean, that? what's the detriment to the woman part if they she have can't understand we gotta I pause actually, it she can't understand this is the mom by the way she can't understand why it would be a detriment to the woman to lose partial custody of the child she's like well is it a money thing otherwise what would be the problem with a woman losing the child half the time hmm she goes on by the way did you catch this Tyler and I looked at each other and them did you catch that comment from the girl where she's like well you birth the motherfuckers like you birthed them like I mean this is just a vulgarity what a beautiful way to talk about a child it's just such such a kind pure wholesome world that we live in in 2022 you know i thought you were being a little uh maybe intense with the term insufferable but then as i look from left to right here you have sleeveless and tattoos with the mm -hmm. alimony or the custody check the girl in the middle who's saying birth the motherfuckers and then the the elf the actual <laughs> yeah. elf oh we're gonna get to the elf on don't the worry far right you're you people at home are like jed you need to address the elf right out of the gate <laughs> <laughs> like what i I wish I could tell you what's going on there. I mean, some type of Halloween costume, some type of fetish. I don't know. I I was I actually could get on board with the costume, but the pointy ears put me right over the top. I was like, <laughs> she was all in. So I just I 
and they're pierced. Like, I don't know if she had her ears done. Like, uh. I think there's an attachment at the top. I don't know. And by the way, you didn't mention the girl with the turquoise shirt. That's the best one. She's just quiet right now. Just wait oh on that. God. So we're talking about custody. And this woman who's a mom can't imagine why a woman would be upset having to give up her kid half the time. Like, what? Does she not get money? Wait, keep playing it. It gets even better. I ask more because, like, I... Well, okay, there's, okay, there's, do you have any kids, Brian? I don't, but there's... Okay, cool. Okay. Let, let me answer your well, yeah, question. Yeah, yes, let, and let me, then, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So the reason that could be viewed as coming to the detriment of women is there's often custody battles. Mm -hmm. And most of the time in custody battles, people want more control over their children. So if women have, if it's sort of de facto, but only like women a, get a custody. child support check, right? Like, what's the, Wait, or are you, you mean because they really want their kid or because they yeah, want like honey. some power over their ex and the money from them? Well, I'm just providing one, one specific example where fem feminists don't fight for the equality. Why wouldn't feminists want like men and women like to have like an equal chance of like having custody of their wait, kid? That's what because it say, comes like, at the detriment but of women. But okay, wait, not, I want to speak to this only from the fucking standpoint of like, I'm the only one sitting here that actually has a kid. And like, I'm the only one sitting here that actually knows what that okay, fucking takes, ahead. okay? And I would say that it is insane as a thought to me that like, I might not have the ability to have a partner be involved. Like, I never would be sitting here with a kid know? in my life if I didn't think that I had that partner being able to be involved in some way. So that's just to say whether we were together or not. So if I were to like do a break custodially, fuck yeah, brother. Like, they better be taking half this fucking time mm. of this child. And let me say why. Because me, like you, enjoys to be a fucking human. Like, I don't know. I know I have friends of mine who I only met in their divorced years, and they, like, could meet me as a single person before kids because they were fucking a divorcee that split custody. I don't know anyone in their right mind that wouldn't <laughs> fucking ask for a split on custodial fucking weird. purposes. Because, sheer so God. This so is, this is deeply disturbing disturbing like as a mom to watch this like I my child is everything to me so heaven forbid anything happen I would be fighting tooth and nail to be with him all the time like he is my everything what an unbelievably selfish strange disturbing response from a female to say Hell yeah. I mean, I need to offload that mofo onto somebody else half the time. I mean, I understand everyone needs a break every now and then to take a shower, to maybe hit the gym for an hour. By the way, that's what family and community used to be for people. I talked about this the other day, how people used to live communally. Now we have the breakdown of community. You have the breakdown of family. So that is a side effect of a lot of this. That there's, you know, it's not like, oh, you know, my mom or my aunt or my, or, or the child's, you know, uh, whatever, cousin or someone can, you know, grab the kid for an hour and let me, you know, take a shower. And no, that doesn't exist a lot of times. So that's a problem. That's a separate conversation we can have. But can you imagine, can you imagine her not being able to wrap her head around how a woman, a mom would want to fight for that child? She can't, she's like, well, is it about, it must be about money, because why else? He better take that child. I mean, what an unbelievably disturbing way to speak about your kid. Let's keep playing, Tyler. I am not good at taking care of my fucking self. So let alone my cats, my dog, and my child. I mean, fuck, man. So Who I'm doesn't want to break? So like. I don't know. I don't get that at all. I think that's a fucking, like, show me the fucking fact that shows that somehow women would benefit from not having the motherfucker take the kid I feel like your time. question sucked. I don't get it. They don't, don't get, get it. that example. They don't get it. They don't get it because they are now growing up in a world. I don't know how old she is. She doesn't look that young. I, I mean, no disrespect, but I, she looks... I would guess like 30 at least. I mean, she doesn't look like she's in. Some of these girls are in their early 20s. They say it um, at some point. I, I don't know how old she is, but she looks like she's lived a little bit more than that. But a lot of these girls, women, are being raised in a world now where motherhood is presented as burdensome. That's all you see. You see the exhausted housewife. You see it in movies. You see it in television. You see it as like basically she's a Cinderella 
You know, she's on the floor scrubbing every tile. You know, she's exhausted. She's tired. She's daydreaming about her former single life. She's trapped, in a sense, in this new life. She has regrets. She has no life of her own. She's getting overweight and just eating badly because she's distressed by it all. That's what's presented. So that's what these women equate with motherhood. I can I don't ha- I don't have a single woman in my life, not one that I know that wouldn't fight tooth and nail for their for full custody of their child and would just say, "I want my kid." And like I like they can't imagine anything else. Not that they don't want that child to have time with the dad. Not none of that, but it's just your baby. It's like you're you're everything. You're like I I I can't even imagine a world where he wouldn't be like I'll figure it out. Like the the most rewarding, incredible job that I will ever have in this life is raising that child. It it, it to, to do it alone would be incredibly hard, incredibly hard. But like I, in my head, I'm like I will figure it out. You know, this is my baby. I wouldn't be thinking about money and this. I mean, I just cannot. There's a tweet by Rolo Tomasi, our friend Rolo Tomasi, that I saw, and I had remembered this tweet, and I held on to it, and I pulled it back for an occasion like this. Let's take a look at that tweet. Tyler, can you read that for me? Because there's a glare. Uh, What woman wants to be a mother? In every media, mothers are defined uh, as boring, asexual, overworked, and fat. Feminism makes motherhood a failure of potential. Why would any woman aspire to being a mom? And this is a huge problem. Modern feminism destroys the idea of motherhood. They make it like if you haven't lived your life right, and by right is by their standard of success. In other words, you didn't climb that corporate ladder. You didn't go figure out what career you wanted to do. You didn't get that MBA right alongside a man. You didn't make the decisions that they deem appropriate for their vision of what a woman should be in 2022. And instead, you decide that you want to be a stay-at-home mom, that you want to be a housewife, that you want to take care of your home, that you want to be you know, more domesticated, that you like to cook, and you all of these things. That's considered less than. And they even go so far in some instances to say that it's for women who couldn't do the other stuff. And it's, that's just completely disrespectful and untrue. They can't wrap their heads around why a woman would want to do those things because they don't want to. They don't want to see that, right? They don't want to see that because it gets in the way of their narrative. And what they really want is women to follow paths that make them more unattractive to men because they don't want this union. Remember, we talk about the system all the time, right? The system doesn't want the union. The system doesn't want women to value traditional roles. They don't want that. They don't want any of that. They want the breakdown of the family. They need, they need the breakdown of the family. They need women and men detached. They need children suffering in those. Why do, why do they want children? You say, well, dead. Why would the system want children to not have a mom and dad at the home? Well, why? Because if a child doesn't have mom and dad at home and a child isn't born into a healthy union between mom and dad, that child is more likely to be dependent on the system. That child is more likely to be put in state-run educational programs or state-run daycare. That child is fresh and ready to be indoctrinated by the state. They hate, they hate, the system hates homeschooling. They hate homeschooling. They hate anything that gives parents and community and family authority over what happens in that child's life. And they love breakdown of family and breakdown of community that hands that child over to the state for its latest indoctrination program. So this is all agenda-driven, what you see with modern feminism. It's all agenda-driven. They're building up women in the way they want women built up, but they're making them less attractive to men. (laughs) They are, and it's by design. I always say, my famous line you will always hear is, the destruction is intentional. And I don't care if it's about getting an experimental vaccine. I don't care if it's about a mandate where you lost your job and you had to move and you couldn't put food on the table. I don't care if it's about a forced closure of your business in the last two years as a result of COVID mania. Or I don't care if it's about breaking up the family by creating paths, idealized paths for men and women that that put them at odds. 
I don't care what it is. The destruction is intentional. And I don't care if it's going after young men. We've talked about this, about how they need young men to be weaker. It's all by design. The sooner you realize that and digest it, as bad as it is to digest, the more you will understand what's going on in the world and the more you will be armed to say, I'm not going to follow that path. I'm not going to do that. Now, I'm not telling women, don't work, don't do what you, I, I, you have to do what makes you happy in life. But don't you dare follow a path that modern feminism says is the right path if that's not what you want to do. One of my dearest friends graduated from college and went to an Ivy League school, one of the most brilliant people that I know. She's smart. She's fully capable. She, she didn't want to work in corporate America. She wanted to be a mom. So she got married, and she got married very young. Um, she got married, I think she was like 23 or 24, and she started having babies, and she has three beautiful children, and she doesn't want any part of modern feminists' view of what her life should look like. And you know what she is? She's happy because she did what she wanted to do. There are plenty of women who don't do that. They feel shunned. They feel ostracized. They feel labeled. And they say, well, maybe I should go get that high power job, even if it's not what they want to do, to please society. Don't do anything to please society because society's not looking out for you. Society's looking out for the dogma that it wants to perpetuate, oftentimes at your expense. All right. So this exchange on motherhood really just, I mean, I, 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 I cannot, I, I remember when I was watching this too, I had, this was yesterday or the day before, and I have my little man running around, and I'm just looking at my child, and I'm like, what is going on in women's heads that they would ever, ever not be able to understand why you would fight tooth and nail to hold on to your child in any circumstance? Even if the guy is the best guy, say say you have a really good dynamic and you separate, but it's amicable and you're still going to be like, that's my baby, you know, that's my baby. Can I, I just cannot relate to it. Maybe it's me. Once again, maybe I'm an antique. I don't know, Tyler, did this strike you as odd to hear a mother talk like that? Uh, based on the cutoffs and the tattoos from her, no. <laughs> no. Like, what? not at all. I'm, I, again, I'm... Looking at the girl in the cutoffs and the tattoos, the woman in the middle with the obey <laughs> shirt that just looks scary, and then the elf that doesn't have any pants on, and it's like, Wait, no, I'm not surprised. Imagine you show up for a blind, you, you go on uh, Tinder, oh my gosh, you go on Tinder and you see a girl and you sign up, and the elf walks in. <laughs> You're like, well, we're we're going for an adventure today. You'll be like, dang, I wish I had just taking her to Applebee's this isn't gonna work out all right see how I just wrote that in yeah you're like yeah Jed all right so let's move on to let's talk about guns for a second this is actually a very important interaction that happens on this same podcast between the girl in the turquoise shirt who has been quiet till now and the host and it's about it's about guns, but it's about something a lot bigger than that so listen really carefully to this exchange and then we're gonna break down this is at 5327 some type of like assault rifle that you have in the military like i don't think any normal per person like not to be controversial but i don't Let's think be, a, you can be controversial i don't think a normal person should have a machine gun you know pause that for one second that, before you know? we get even into the conversation god help where do these people get their news no one has a machine gun doll you can't have a machine gun it's illegal a semi-automatic weapon is not an automatic weapon so there are, people aren't walking around with machine guns. They're walking around with AR-15s, which, by the way, they use for self-defense, which they use for hunting, which they use for home defense. But do you see how somebody like that, clearly feminist, liberal, you'll hear a lot about more about her when we get to the body count discussion. <laughs> but regardless, you see how she just, she just ate up and swallowed that talking point? Nobody should have a machine gun. She thinks we're all living and people are just walking around with it, like Terminator style. That's what they want you to believe when they talk about the gun debate that people are walking around with machine guns, okay? So let's just, God help me. Well, that's because that's what they're told by their Congress people. Right. Who are incompetent <laughs> and oblivious. Right. Most of the people, it's amazing, the gun debate is like where the most morons are exposed because you have a whole bunch of people in DC and New York that, in media, who've never shot a gun, who know nothing about guns. Who, who will have, tell you AR stands for assault rifle. Assault rifle, assault rifle, who use the term assault weapon which is a political term. They don't even know what they're saying. They just know, you know what it, you know what it is, by the way, when you, not to get political, but I will. 
they they define whether a gun is concerning to them based on how scary it looks. That's all they know. They see it and they're like, oh, that looks scary. And that's not an assessment of how damaging a gun can actually be. Some of the guns that look the scariest actually aren't as as problematic as ones that don't look as scary. They just know nothing about it. It's amazing. And they don't refer, like, I'm not a gun expert, but I clearly, if I'm having a discussion about guns, I'll say, I'll bring in a gun expert. They don't do that. But this is just fascinating. She's like, no one needs a machine gun. You don't say, honey. I better just bring mine back to Walmart then. God. <clears throat> okay, let's keep going. What? I don't think we should be able to bring that into Walmart, you know, but like <laughs> if he lives in a dangerous city and he has a small gun to protect himself, like, you know, who am I to judge? But like as a woman, it, it does scare me, you know, being around a man with a gun like that. Just why does why me. does that scare you uh, again? Not to get too political, be but political. Like, as it. as a Be black political. woman, okay. Like, then she goes into this whole conversation disappear. about race and this that. I mean, but it, what was really interesting to me about that is that she's talking about how, as a woman, and she looks pretty small. She looks like she's petite. That she would be afraid to be with a guy with a gun. So I'm sitting to myself. My first reaction is, well, why did you choose to date somebody that you're afraid of? That reflects poor decision making on your part. You're dating a guy that you're afraid of. So are you afraid of him without the gun then? Because odds are that most guys, if they were intended to do harm, could knock you out. So are you just choosing someone that you're afraid to be around? This is a problem because now you have heavily promiscuous women. They're not particular about the men that they share their bodies with or their time with. They're floating around. There's no trust in those situations. So they're with a bunch of guys they don't trust and that dynamic goes right through. Distrust right through. Now guys are the enemy. Now we're afraid of you. Why are you afraid? Because you don't know most of them that you're sleeping with. And you're going to see that confirmed in the next conversation. You don't know them. So you're afraid. So maybe a better idea would be to get to know guys, build some level of trust, then decide to escalate things, share your body with them. And that guy, you will not be afraid for them to have a gun because you will know that they are there to protect you. It's also just a fundamental misunderstanding of the role of men. The right guys that you are supposed to choose using your own discretion, using your own instinct, using your own assessment as a grown woman, you're supposed to choose the guy that you trust not spread yourself thin, open like 7-Eleven for everybody. No, you're supposed to be selective and choose that guy that you're like, I trust him. His role then is to protect you. He wants to do that. He wants to be in charge of that. If he's a guy, real guy, not like some, you know, eh, pink nail polish, whatever. So it shows a fundamental misunderstanding of the role of the roles of men and what good quality men out there, they're okay with that job. Now, this really bothers me at my core because you can't have a functioning society if we now live in a world where women distrust men, men distrust women for other reasons. This has to be fixed. It has to be fixed. And the way that it starts getting fixed, by the way, is by women stopping doing what they're doing. Stop being promiscuous. I mean, I understand why if you were sleeping with everybody and you weren't getting to know them, I understand why you would be hesitant. You might be afraid of that guy. You don't know him. Change the model. Get to know the person. Find somebody that you trust. Focus in on them. Forget all of the other nonsense and you will trust that guy to have that gun to protect you because you will understand that that's why he's there. All of this has been lost in some sort of feminist upheaval, but it's disturbing to me that you would hear a girl's, I cannot imagine, I mean, I would trust my husband with my life, my child's life, my dog, my little baby dog, like everything, our home. I mean, I cannot think of anything that I wouldn't put in his hands. That's why I chose him because I knew that about him. What a sick world we're in now if you have women who are living with, with such high levels of promiscuity 
that they're not making good choices and they don't even trust the guys around them. Oh, that sounds like a recipe for societal success. Uh, no. Okay. <sighs> now we're going to talk about ghosting. <laughs> you ever ghost anyone? By the way, hit that subscribe button. You know you got it. Hit subscribe. You know you want to. You're, you're just like, Mer. hit that like button. Hit that like. Do you like the video? Do you like the content? Hit that like. Show some love. Got to remind you. You get so enraptured in the discussion. You forget. I know how it is. Have you ever ghosted anyone in the chat? Tell me. Ever ghosted any? I know you have. I know you have. Share why you ghosted them. I'm curious. Your personal experience. Why did you decide? Well, there's a girl on this particular podcast as well who's been getting ghosted a lot. And she just, for the life of her, she just can't figure out why. Huh. What a puzzler. Let's hear it in her own words. Back to his ex. So... Were you guys kind of seeing each other? No, I mean, I mean not really, but um, he was really, he's supposed to come over tomorrow, and now oh. he's not. <laughs> Wait, is this, is this the guy that you were talking about before? No, someone else. Um, no, this how, guy. Many, how many little links you got going on right now? Maybe a few, maybe a few, but they all kind of ghost me pretty quickly. They go what? They ghost why. me really quickly. Right. Why? He why says, do they ghost you quickly? I don't, I don't know. I wish I knew. That's, any guys out there? Do you think they ghost okay, you Okay, so we can pause know? it there. So she can't imagine why the guys are ghosting her. Now, what you don't hear is that prior in the podcast, she's talking about a whole different guy, whole different situation, whole different thing. So the host here comes in and is like, oh, this story you're telling now is about that same guy. She's like, oh, no, that's a different one. She's got a whole bunch of guys that she's just dipping in and out of. Like, oh, maybe this one on a Tuesday and this one on a Wednesday. And she wants to know why this particular guy just goes to her. Well, honey, because he knows that you've got a bunch of guys and he can't take you seriously as a result. That is not attractive to him. The fact that you're, you know, open for Tommy on Monday and Jared on Tuesday and Wednesday is Bobby's day and Thursday. He doesn't want to be one of the many with a woman that he's taking seriously he's already sized up in his mind that he can't take you home to mom like behaving like that that's not attractive so will the guy hit it maybe i think some guys don't care when they're looking at somebody that's a one night stand they're not terribly particular it's just a reality it's just sex for them they're like well i need to have sex today okay now is that a good dynamic no but it happens. We have to deal in the world of reality, right? That is the reality. However, those same guys are not going to want somebody like that to be on their serious relationship side of things. Hell no. What's really interesting to me about this is that she can't fathom it, though. She's actually like, well, that why? It can't be it. And at one point, she says, well, he's got a bunch of girls. He's got a bunch of girls again. That didn't affect, though, how you saw him. You still want him to call you, but it did affect how he saw you because he doesn't want to hang with you because he knows he's one of many and it's not cute. So you've just taken yourself off the serious girlfriend contender list by being available to guys of all different kinds at all different hours and he's one of them. He don't want to do it. But the lack of self-awareness is just mind-blowing to me. Okay. Now we're going to talk about this elf, man. She comes back in this one. I didn't hear a lot from the elf, but just having her on the end. You know why they let her come in. You know that girl was like, I want to be in the podcast. And he was like, are you, are you going to wear that? And she was like, yeah. And he was like, okay, come on in. Just because you can't. Your eyes go right to it. And you, you can't stop asking yourself what the heck's going on there. This is the conversation about body count that I want to get to. It's a twofold conversation. And the first part involves women not knowing their body count. They don't know. Let's play that part. I like who sent in the super chat there on the screen. Oh, what does it say? The rational male. Oh, Lady, is that him? Ladies, <laughs> what is your body count? <laughs> Roll those in the house. Roll those all up in the chats everywhere, I notice. I've, you didn't catch that? I didn't catch it. Yeah, that's funny, man. Rollo is all up in the chat. I love it. Okay. I love it. I'm going to have to tell him to come up in this chat, cause some trouble. Let's play it. Just how many sexual partners you've had? Sexual partners. Nine. Okay. Honestly, don't know. 
I don't count. I don't really care. More than, less than 10, more than 10? Probably around 10. I don't know. 30? (laughs) No. I said around 10. Okay. Um, I actually just learned not that long ago that like full on, like all the way, you know, is looking. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh Uh-huh. I don't know. Maybe like (laughs) 10, 13. 10, 13. 10, yeah. 10, 13. Sexual partners. Okay. Sexual partners. (laughs) Average. I don't keep one on purpose because I had a friend in middle school that was like that bitch that like fucking wrote down every fucking thing oh about God. every but, fucking okay, body. Okay, it doesn't have to be an exact number. No, it can dude. Just be. I don't know because she had an exact body count like, I don't care when about we your was on high school. school. I don't care. High school. Care. Hold on. got to be at least. I, high school. Her friend already had a body count in high school, meaning it wasn't just like one. There weren't people that. Had, when did she start? Sixth grade? Holy mother of earth. I can't even. Tyler looked up because he's like, did the sound go out? No, it's me just being like, Ugh, I can. High school already with a body count. Wow. And she's just like high school. Yeah, she's just like kept notes on everything. Okay, we're going to get back to, by the way, the 10 to 13 and the 9 and the 10 and the I don't know. Let's just keep playing for now. Enough to know that I can fucking fuck. She could fuck. So how? What do you want to give a, <laughs> a range? Lot. Twenty to thirty, forty to fifty. What do you think it is? I don't know. <clears throat> okay, so let's stop and there. Uh, this is disgusting. Disgusting. Honestly, most of these women <laughs> are in their early twenties. You're telling me that in your early twenties, you already got a body count ten to thirteen. You already got a body count that's like around ten, but you don't know. You don't know. Because so many of them were just like in and out. Oh, they came in for a hot second, then they left. And just like, yeah, never saw them again. The one says nine. She had to think about it for a second. I'm pretty sure she just said nine because she was like, I don't know, nine? Does that do you, sound okay? Do you think she wore the outfit all nine times? I wonder if there are different outfits for different occasions. Different. She has different color contact lenses she puts in. Sometimes she looks like a snake. Sometimes a fairy. Mm. Sometimes the elf. Maybe she's got different ears. <laughs> is it all elf all the time? Is it elf in the bedroom? What does that mean? What does that entail? Maybe sometimes she's a cat. A cat? A dog? Woof. I don't know. Okay, I've got things have gone bad here. It is kind of like, mm, what's going on there, honey? But you know what I love about it? He doesn't ask. Right. He's not like, hey, uh, w- w- What's going on here? Right. He just takes a... So you're just an elf today? Right. Cool. Like, he's I'm like, not going to address that. He just asks her questions as if she's just looking just normal. Just like a regular chick, you know? Doesn't everyone just sometimes look like an elf? I mean, holy... Great. Brilliant, by the way. Because if he brought it up, it would be less funny than him not bringing it up. This guy is onto something with this show. I'm telling you straight up. And the fact that he's like... Has the demeanor he has. And he's just like totally cool calm collected and does have a little bit of like a nerdy vibe to him it works brilliantly for the panel so this is i will be watching this show quite often and bringing some stuff to the table but this is nasty again so if you are in your early 20s and you don't know what your body count is you are telling you're announcing to everyone don't pick me for a serious relationship you basically put a sticker on your body that says like if you're looking for something serious walk on by because how could that be? How could these numbers, honestly, early 20s, 10 to 13? I mean, these girls just must be sleeping with just randos here and there. It's wild to me, especially looking back. I mean, I lost my virginity. I was 19 when I lost my virginity. I left college. My body count was one. 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 Holy Lord, these early 20s with 10 to 13, y'all been busy y'all been busy now the point that the girl makes the the one that has the kid where she says well I know I have had enough and I know how to fuck she's proud of that she's gonna go on to have a debate about why that's a good thing she thinks that that's a good thing because she has experience under her belt and that that's gonna be welcomed by men so let's listen to that let's complete were we at the end of that one Tyler did we go Uh, to the end of that one yeah Okay, let's go to the next one. 
This is great. This is great. For most men, body count is very important. Because <laughs> of their and dick and body size? <laughs> what? Why? He's like, body count what? Matter, body count matters for me, and for most men, oh. men care a lot about a woman's body count. Hmm. They want a woman with a low body count. Yeah. The, fewer the, the fewer the better. But Why? don't you want to get that wanna, dick like, sucked real you. good? Yeah, it's going to be better. <laughs> She's vulgar. What's wrong Practice with Practice makes perfect. I don't remember the last time I even, hung... Okay, even for a one-night stand, even for a one-night stand, I'd rather get with a girl with a low body count. I've never... That's are you going to I don't her? remember the last time I hung out with a guy, like, what's your body count before we do anything? I've Or even date. Like, I don't remember the last time someone asked me that. Who and, keeps and, track? And you've said, you've said, though, <laughs> that you've had track? trouble getting into relationships. Yes, but that okay. is not from whatever my body Okay, so is. men have two categories. We have hookup-only category... Mm -hmm recreational only category and then we have relationship marriage girlfriend category mm -hmm. for that category men care deeply about body count mm -hmm. if it's just to hook up a lot of men probably are going to give a bit more leeway but when it comes to serious commitment men care not all men but m you ask most men most men are invested I, in a woman's past in her promiscuity <laughs> I failed at dating, but a, nothing of body count or anything like that has been brought up. So it. Oh, I can't I pause not. it. Oh. <sighs> okay, so let me tell you straight up. You don't need to tell a guy that you have a high body count for him to know that you have a high body count. If he's at all adept at life <laughs> and he has any sense of awareness of what's going on around him, he's going to know what your body count looks like relatively just based on your behavior. So, do you go out with him and sleep with him on the first night? Are you quick to get promiscuous with him? He's going to look at that and say, well, odds are she's quick to get promiscuous with others as well. How is your behavior? Are you respectful? Do you have expectations of, you know, conversation and being treated well? Or are you happy for him to just come over to your apartment and hang out that first time and Netflix and chill? They can tell so much by your behavior. How do you dress to show up for that first date? What do you look like? Do you look like a hooker? Let's be straight. Or do you look sexy, but like you have self-respect? There's a big difference. So guys are assessing all of this also, have you been talking about your other, your exes? Are you constantly on the phone like, hee hee, with somebody else while you're talking to him? Are you referencing other experiences? Are you a party girl and you're always out and you're talking about, oh, the other night I was drunk and I was doing this? And there are so many things that go into guys' minds as they're looking at you. They are deciding a lot of things about you, much like you are about them. So they know, they have a rough sense of what your body count is based off your behavior to them. And they're usually pretty close to being right. They may not know if it's two or three, but they're gonna be able to tell if it's two or 20. Very, very different. Very, very different the way those two types of women interact in dating situations. It is vulgar to me as a female to hear another female say, who keeps track? Who cares about body count? Who I, cares, Tyler? I would, Who? I don't know. I don't write stuff down. You know what I think about old cigarettes over there with the sleeveless? I, she's the kind of mom that would share a boyfriend with her daughter. That could very or, well be. Or a girlfriend with her son. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and she's also the one, by the way, if you remember, that was talking in the custody battle about like, oh, why mm -hmm. would you want to, why would you, she's partying it up. She's getting that body count up. I mean, really, this is, I'm not here to judge what kind of mom she is. I don't know her personally. I give people the benefit of the doubt when it comes to children. I have to believe you love your child and everything's going well over there because that's the, the idealistic rainbow world I like to live in when it comes to children. It's just too hard for me to imagine anything else. It's too difficult for me to process. However, this is fascinating. Again, these women cannot understand. They're saying, well, wouldn't you want somebody experienced? She says, don't you want someone who's going to suck that eggplant real good? She says, let me tell you something, sister. He would rather have somebody who doesn't screw like a porn star than have somebody who screws like a porn star because 
they've been around the block 150 times and that's why they have the skill. If a woman is good in bed naturally, great. It's a plus. But here's a little bit of a note. Real alpha men, they, they don't need you to be good in bed. They don't need you to have the skills because they have them. They're going to know how to maneuver you. They're going to know how to make that experience enjoyable. They're going to know what to do. They're not overly concerned with your skill set. Now, if you happen to be skilled in the bedroom, great. That's a bonus. If it happens, because that's just naturally who you are. What guys really want in someone in the bedroom, by the way, is someone who's enthusiastic. They want you to want to be there. They want you to be into them. They want you to be sexually attracted to them. They want you to be feminine. They want you to be sexy and comfortable in your body. And they want you to really want to do it. Like they're, you're really into them. They don't need you and they don't, by the way, want you to be able to have sex like a porn star if that means that you have behaved in life as a porn star. That's unattractive to them. They would rather have someone who's virginal or someone who has much, much less experience and as a result, maybe doesn't suck the eggplant as well as a pro, but has lived a pure life. They've got it covered in the bedroom. They're very confident, they know what to do, and they're going to make you comfortable. Real men, I know some people take issue with the word real, but it's true, real men think like that. What's well, like if you're kissing a girl, you don't wanna wonder if she's brushed your teeth you know what I mean? It's like, hey, am I, is it Steve or John or? Nasty. 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 I just don't understand why women don't get, like, I said this on the show the other day that they don't, they don't like to think about your past, Right. They're also not going to want to think about your present with other guys. So this woman that's like, well, I, I don't know, I just, my dating life is just a mess, but it can't be because of my body count. Yes, it is, in part. Who knows? There could be other problems there as well. But your guy doesn't want to know that when he leaves on a Monday, that Tuesday, you're open for business with somebody else. That's disgusting to him. He can't take you seriously at that point. He can't. He can't envision it. He doesn't want to envision it. He doesn't want all that in his space. No. He may hit it and then leave and never think about you again. <laughs> and he can handle that. Like I came in, I had sex. It was like tying my shoelaces and I left. But he's not going to get involved with someone where he becomes emotionally invested and he starts caring about you and he's got to think about you being open like 7-Eleven. No. No. He's not going to sign up for that. No way, no how. So if your body count is high and your dating life sucks, I guarantee you that your body count as a woman is part of the problem. Oh, man. These, my blood pressure is going up doing these. I'm telling you, I can't. I look back at my life and I'm like, when I first started having these discussions, I was speaking from a place of like, oh, women are like me. Like, no, that's some nasty stuff, some vulgar stuff. Talking about, oh, I suck the D real good. Can you imagine? Holy, my poor parents home listening to this. They're like, my daughters. Listen, I'm trying to restore purity, mom and dad, to society. It's all for a good cause. Okay. Keep playing that end of that clip for me. Do you still have it up? Mm -hmm. Play the end of that one. Right, but there's other ways men what's can the sort part? of... Can I ask the yeah, why? What's like, what's the why here? Why the low body count? I'm not, like, asking with some, like, fucking underlying, like, I'm asking for a friend. Like, I'm just curious. Yeah. No, like, I'm, why? I can, I can give you a couple of reasons. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, is it is it surprising to you to you to hear a guy say that body count matters? Because, I mean, I think... No. no. But I, I also think, like... know that But I don't think matters. they always ask either. Like, no. I, I fucking... I, I like feel like... you're dating, you start asking those types of questions, well, you know? No, some of them never fucking ask. Some of them just don't want to know. I was like, in a some relationship of them really for over a year. Know. And they know, honey. They yeah. know. I don't some people know his truly don't fucking yeah. go investigating into your past. And we didn't And care. you even offer them shit. And they're like, I didn't really want to fucking smell that shit. You didn't need to pull that. And you're like, Because they're not planning to stay. Like, That's why. They're not planning to stay. They don't need to know because they're in and they're out. They don't need to know. They already know. They, we all know. We've, we've met you. Whoever you are, I don't know. I, God bless. 
But we, we all know. We all know that the number is probably north of 30. I feel very comfortable saying that. We know. So, of course, the guy that's messing with you knows. He knows. You don't have to tell him. And the reason he's saying when you offer a little bit, he's saying, eh, because he's not taking you seriously. Because I can promise you if he was taking you seriously, he would have a problem with that looseness with which you talk. It's not attractive. It's just not. Oh, it's a separate set of rules. It's a- there is. There is a separate set of rules. It's just different. It's just different. It's different. It is. I'm not saying that I like when guys, by the way, talk about like, oh, yeah, I hit it with this one and I hit it with. It's, it's not appealing to me as a person. Like that's not, as a woman, I don't find that sexy in a man. However, is it 10 times more vulgar when a woman says it? Yes, it is. It is. Because one of the things that makes women beautiful in my mind is that there is some sense of purity and that there is a difference between a man and a woman. A man is more, by nature, more guttural and more, women are supposed to be more delicate about these things. We just are. You're a sexist, Jed. Whatever. Throw your names, your terms. It's true. People in the chat, you know. Do you like, guys in the chat, are you, do you like women who talk like this? You know you don't. You're like, mm-mm, nasty. Oh, what was that noise, Tyler? I Is got that a doorbell? Email. Oh, Tyler got an email. Well, look at that. <laughs> look, he's bashful now. Look, Tyler getting bashful. Just just a popular guy. Pop- he's probably spam. Top G. He's Top spam. G. All right. What I, what I love about it is the end of this segment, but it goes on forever. But at the end, the, one of the girls says, if I want to have sex, I'm going to have sex. Just like that. And it's like, okay, you can do that. Let me be clear about my position on one thing. You are free to live the life you want as a man or a woman. You can be promiscuous. You can, you know, be monogamous. You can have multiple partners. You can have one night stands every night of your life. You can never have a one night stand. That is your prerogative. And I am going to protect your freedom forever. Whether I believe it's in the best interest of society or not, to live the life you want to live. But we have to be realistic about those choices have consequences. And if you are a female and you are just getting that body count higher and higher and higher and being promiscuous and not caring, that is going to impact how attractive you are to men. Your level of attractiveness will go down. So you are free to do whatever you want. Absolutely. But there are consequences, and it would be silly of you not to acknowledge the reality of those consequences. Okay, I have one more that I want to do today, and then we're going to stop, because it's really funny. Tyler actually sent this one to me, and we also, we often talk about, you know, women, and do they lie? Do they lie? Do they tell you the truth about what they want in a man when it comes to money? This is a great clip, because it's talking to college girls, who, by the way, seem to have no perception of money at all, like, how much money you make typically like what money buys like just completely like definitely in an academic bubble but let's play it i think it's important i should make per year um it depends where they live i mean if i'm like dating them it'd be nice if they were at least making a hundred thousand um i have no clue like a million two million Hey, we're at ASU, you know, so you're not going to find him here. <laughs> like, fully, like, adult. Someone that you would consider wanting to be with the rest of your life. 300K. Three figures. Okay, so <laughs> why is that? Just because, like, that's a stable income, I'd say. 100, like 500 grand? Is that a lot? No, that's, uh, 500 is... Like, normal? Uh, on a good day, yeah. I mean, it depends. Okay. Uh, a lot were expensive. Yeah. Mills. Millions. Mills. Oh, shit. Okay. I don't really care. I think, I mean, I like when guys like pay for dates and stuff. So if a guy made 30K a year, is that something you're okay with? Yeah, that, I think that would be great. Like your husband? Oh, shit. Oh. Husband. Yeah, I think that would be fine. If it was my husband, I'd be in love with him. So. I wouldn't really say I would have a price on that. I mean, as long as they treat me respectfully. Minimum six figures, no matter what the situation is. Right. We have so, an expensive lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I totally understand. We got to get good skincare routine, you know, the whole whole nine yards. 100,000. 120K. 80K and like maybe like 120? 
Okay. Yeah, I would say like 80 to 150. Over 100K. Once you get to a certain age, like... I don't know, I'm also kind of like a gold digger, so. Oh. No, um, I'm planning on just like supporting myself um, with my income, so I don't really plan on being supported by the person that I'm dating. What is the lowest you would go, though? Um, 500,000. <laughs> I could have a, like a, a nice, like subtle life with like a 200,000 a year, like okay. normal, great, yeah. What's the lowest, though, that you would go for? Um, I don't think money is stopping you. Uh, maybe like a... Uh, it has to be. You just I said know, one I or know, two I'm mil. Would you be down for 80? Yeah, 80, 60. I'd be fine. Okay. Okay. I can't. So what did they say? In sum, some of the numbers I heard, at least 100K, one or two mil. Oh, just that. Just one or, just one or, don't worry, guys. And then she said money doesn't matter. Yeah. You caught it too. Yeah. One or two mil. Oh, money is not that important. Just one or two mil. That's not that hard to make. Just one or two mil. 300K, six figures. The best, the one that says three figures. She means six figures. Poor thing. Just lost in space. 500K mils. One says she's a gold digger. At least she's self-aware enough and she's being honest, right? Maybe she'll go into that situation and be like, hey, I'm a gold digger. Hmm, how much you make? Uh, when they say how low would you go, 500K, 200K, some say 80. Now, granted, there are a couple in there, couple, that say, oh, I don't care. And they, there's, I think, literally two. So do women exist that fall outside of this? Yes. Do the vast majority of women that you ask care about money? Yes. And they have really, really high numbers. $500,000 a year? It usually takes somebody, even if you are someone that graduates, you know, from a really good school and you're in the internship program and you're an engineer and you're on track to have this very specified career, it takes years before you get to 500K. That's just realistic. If you get there at all, 500K is a huge salary. So here's the thing I'm going to say to you guys. You should be very comfortable. If women are making these expectations of you financially and they're open about it if they're open on camera they're going to be open with you they're going to tell you right or they're going to leave you if they think that you're not rich enough right this is something that they care about obviously then you should feel very comfortable to ask what what do you bring to the table like what are you going to do in this marriage that you think would be really special and that would make me want to do this why you, should, you can either ask directly or you can piece that situation together yourself. But the problem is in society right now is that you have women that will make these expectations of men publicly, out loud, front and center. They need to make this and they need to make that. If you turn around and you say, okay, you know what? I can do that. But what I really want is a wife. Like I want, I want someone who's going to take care of the home and I want a good mom and I want someone who's going to cook. Oh, you misogynist you are total mis and the guy's like well that's what i want you told me that you are you a gold digger are you a gold digger for saying that you want a guy that makes over a hundred thousand dollars a year or five hundred thousand dollars a year you're just saying what you want that's something that you want you want to live a certain way but that guy is not allowed to say that there are things that are important to him too so don't be afraid as men to vocalize that. And if it's something that's really important to you, stick by it. Because the women are going to stick by theirs. They are. They have expectations and they're saying it. And I think it's a, a real problem in this day and age that men feel uncomfortable saying what they want in a relationship dynamic because it's not considered, you know, cool or, you know, oh, it's not cool to say that I really want an old school housewife. Why? That's what you really want. That doesn't mean that you're not going to love her. That's not going to mean that you're not going to care deeply about your family. That doesn't mean that you're going to be a cheater or you're going to be dishonest. No, that just means that you really want someone who can do things that you don't do well and that you don't want to do. I don't know if you've noticed this, but guys aren't particularly well at organizing. Like my husband's not the one at home that's cleaning out closets. I love to do that. Cleaning out closets is like, honestly, I could really be an old school Kim Kardashian in my day. Remember, she used to clean out the closets of everybody. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? That's how she's, she was Paris Hilton's closet organizer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eminem's really good at that, too. 
I love it. I love it. I love to clean. Send me somewhere to clean out a closet. I get, my mom got me on that when I was young, really young, and I love it. So I just, I feel like, of course, you know, guys, you want to you you want to have a healthy dynamic in a relationship, but it's just, why can't you say that you, you know, maybe you're a terrible cook and it's really important to you that someone knows how to cook. You know, maybe you really want someone you, who takes pride in the home because you're going to buy the house and you're willing to buy the house. You're willing to buy the house and get it for the family and pay that mortgage, but you're not terribly well at furnishing and keeping everything clean. And so you want that in, in someone. That's not, that doesn't mean that's all they're going to be to you, but that's something that you really take pride in and something that you would respect. One last note before we close for today. One thing that I think that would be really nice, and I just want to get to the chat. Tyler, if there's anything in the chat, let me know that we need to get to, but it's up to you. But one thing that I think would be really helpful, and I said this to my husband last night, we were having a discussion about this, because being a housewife and, you know, caring for the home and wanting to be a mom has been so heavily demonized by women, largely, modern women in society and by media in 2022, if you're a guy and you have that dynamic and you love it, I think it's really important to say it out loud and to let that woman know, let your wife know that you really appreciate all of that stuff. It goes so far because it is a job. It is very challenging being home with kids all day and caring for a home and laundry and upkeep and cooking. And even if you love it, it's a job and it's 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 hard, right? There are a lot of social experiments where they had uh, guys flip roles and leave their job at traditional job and come home and do everything around the house. And by the end of the day, they're like, you know, it's hard. So. I think that expressing appreciation becomes really integral, especially living in a society now where women who make those choices are demeaned um, and discouraged and made to feel less than. So always, always in your home, I think it goes a long way to express that gratitude and just acknowledgement that it, it's, it's not a popular decision in 2022 for some women to make, but it's such an important decision when it comes to raise, you know, raising children. And I always say, people say, well, Jed, you didn't, you know, you didn't take that route. You know, you were a career person. And that's true in some respects. Like I, I met my husband late and I didn't really know that I wanted a lot of this until I met him. But I will say this, and it's really interesting. My, I t- made very different decisions once I got pregnant and I realized how special this time in my life was going to be. And I took a job that was three days a week um, so that I could have more days with my baby. And I came out here to, and I decided to launch a show, but I didn't do it five days a week. I did it three. And those off days, everybody who works on my show knows that sometimes I'm like, I need to go and hang with my son. Like I'm going to be off the phone for a while. So those priorities really did shift for me once I had a vision of what this other part of my life could look like. And I Everything I've done in my life, when I look back, my biggest and best accomplishment is my child. Like he brings me a joy and a happiness that no job ever could. And I've had some very good paying jobs that I worked really hard to get and some very prestigious jobs, but nothing on this planet can compete with what makes me really happy. And what makes me really happy is to be a wife to a man that I love and trust more than anything and to be the mom to a beautiful baby boy that I'm raising and who just gives me everything everything like if everything else left and I had those two people I'd be totally cool preferably on a plot of land in the middle of nowhere where I didn't have to see a lot of other people just saying but just so just know that um that oftentimes when I speak about this stuff it's because I came to knowledge in a different way but I came to it and I feel really really strongly about God, the universe, whoever sent me that lesson. So I want to thank you guys today. You have chat stuff or? Alan Hopkins gave five books. Uh, Chris Rock once said, men can't go back sexually and women can't go back in lifestyle. That's true. You can't go back at all. I mean, that's the thing. You can't go back at all. But the reality is that what you do in your life as a woman in your early years in terms of partners matters. It just does. 
It just matters. The guys just, it just matters. If your goal, now does it matter if you have decided you want to be single for your entire life, you don't want to get married, you don't want to have kids? No, maybe not. But you might change your mind and then it might matter. Um, and it matters anyway because that self-respect and that all of that stuff, you'd be surprised. All of that, oh, the guy doesn't matter and bouncing in and out of bedrooms and oh, nothing has value and oh, who cares about the number? That's going to catch up emotionally too because women aren't designed to behave that way. They're not. They're not designed to behave that way. You're not a guy. You're not a guy. You're not biologically wired for sex in the way guys are. It's different. Um, and, and I always say, not a popular declaration that I make, but if you are a woman and you're making decisions angled toward promiscuity and angled toward not caring and not having intimacy in those moments and sex without emotion, there's something broken going on there. Either you're absorbing and regurgitating too much of modern feminists' garbage, or there's some, you know, self-destruction going on there. There's something wrong there. There's something going on that you, you should think about um, that you can fix and that you can change. But I, I don't think it's, I don't think we're wired to behave that way. I really don't. Um, and I don't think ultimately it's a happy path for women to behave that way, no matter how deluded some of these young women are now who just swallow this stuff up, spit it out, and then 20 years down the road are on antidepressants because they're miserable. So we do some uh, cold, hard truth delivery here. It's not always popular, but it is always honest. Subscribe. Did you hit the subscribe button? Do I have to do a dance? Do I have to get Eric in here to do the Macarena? Subscribe, like, love you guys. I'll be back here on Thursday, Friday this week. Friday we have Eric preach. Oh yeah. And Thursday, I think it's just gonna be me with some craziness. Um, also, let me know in the chat, do you want to hear more politics or do you want to hear more dating and relationships? I want to hear your opinion. Other than that, I'll see you on Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Don't get into too much trouble this week. Behave. Just saying. Bye.